Hey folks, it's time for Twip Pro Photo Critique, episode 34. This is Twip. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Twip Pro Photo Critique. This is the session where we take the images that have been submit to the, or submitted to the Twip Pro Photo Critique topic, and we talk about them. Here to do that with me is my partner in crime, Mr. Troy Miller. Troy Miller, what's going on, man? Hey, I'm just excited to get into these images. There are some really good ones in here today. Well, there's, there's always good ones, right? We always say that. So it's not canned. It's actually there's a, there's a lot of really good ones. I'm going to I'm going to go on record and take credit that uh, that the images are getting better because of these critiques. What do you think? I think there is potential for that, yes. Because <laughs> none of these photographers knew anything before they joined to a pro. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Of course yeah. I kid. There's a lot of very talented people in here that have been doing a lot, doing great work for years and years. So Yeah, extraordinarily talented, yeah. Yep. So let's uh, let's dive in. Let's dive in and start looking at these images. I've got Twip Pro up on the screen. I'm going to scroll down and find the latest submission. Uh, here it is. It looks like it's from Peter Levshin. Right. Yeah, it's firecrackers in China. Firecrackers in China. He says a Canon 5D uh, Mark III 24 to 70 fireworks at a wedding in China. The bigger the fireworks, the more luck you'll have. In this first round, a thousand went off. Uh, total number in the high nine thousands. Lots of noise. I, my comment on this was: this guy looks like of the two people in this image. It looks like he was probably the less smart of the. Ones. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to light him, right? Yeah, the woman in the background or the girl, female person in the background uh, is the smart one. I'm gonna bring this up full screen. All yeah, right, she's way back there and plugging her ears, and he's not. So that right. he's gonna. <laughs> I uh, I love this image. I, I I think that this this is this is idealistic of a photojournalistic kind of image, right? Like I don't really have to guess a lot at what's going on in here. There's stories going on. The rules of composition are working for me. Exposure, uh, sharpness, everything everything is really working well. Yeah. Um, I might play with a little bit of cropping the left side off just a bit, tighten it up. Not necessary. I mean, he's like he feels like he's dead center. Mm -hmm. uh, I may, I may, I may trim the left side just a tad. Yeah, but it, it, you know, this one's hard to critique because this is this is right there. This is right in the zone. Yeah, I agree. I agree with everything you said. This is a, this is a fantastic image. Congratulations, Peter, and uh, and for putting the putting the person in the background to let you know that it was in fact noisy. Obviously, it's noisy, but it's good to see someone back there covering their ears to to protect themselves. Uh, yeah, I bet that was loud. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know that we could do this here in the United States. <laughs> I don't know that this would, this would go off that well in, in, uh, in this country, but Hey, China, that's, uh, that's, that's where fireworks originated. Right. So beautiful stuff. Mm -hmm. I love it, Peter. Congratulations on this. All right. Moving on. Next image up is from, let's bring it up. Uh, this is another Peter image. This is a Sony A7R um, infrared, no, A7R2 infrared, 16 millimeter in Burma. Uh, and he says these ladies tattoo their faces when they're very young so that the king would not make them sex slaves. Wow. Look at that. So let's see. Let this load in. Look at that. That's full screen. So yeah, these tattoos color, are, this was interesting because he said, first of all, there's, there's two things that hit me on this image. He said this, this image was shot this way or not shot this way, but the, these, these people tattoo their faces as a deterrent so they don't get taken as sex slaves, which is like, you know, that's, that's one of the main reasons why some of the tribes in Africa do body mutilation as well. Like with the rings right. and the lips and you know, the neck stretching and all that stuff that's for that that is that it started that way and then evolved into just sort of adornment over time and then the other thing that got me into that that uh, that struck me about this image was infrared and he was saying that the lines on this woman's face the tattoos were barely visible in normal visible light but in infrared they come out like this so that yep. that that is fantastic what do you think about the shot 
Yeah, I think it's great. And and I've seen this in color and it's amazing how you really don't see the tattoos at all. And I know that he's photographed some other monks and things that have tattoos on their arms that you can't see in color, but infrared, it brings that out. So it's sort of that magic light. Um, my only challenge with this, and Peter knows this, is the blacks in the background and on her hands and stuff are blocked up. So they've been pushed past the point of, you know, having any sort of tonality in there. And I just wish that there was more tonal gradation in the shadow area and, and into the blacks. I think that that would help a lot. But as far as the, the subject goes, it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I, I agree. I was looking when he said that. I was like, why don't more people do these kinds of sort of hidden message tattoos that are only visible in infrared light because you can do all kinds of messaging on yourself and be walking around like <laughs> you know I'm, I'm, i got my little political message on my body you can't see it unless you look at me in infrared you know <laughs> right that'd be pretty cool the cool image very cool image all yeah, right, moving neat. on. And we're going to go at a, a reasonable clip through these because we have so many to go through. We're going to make sure we touch on all of these. All right, next one is from our friend Tim Engel. A re-edit from a shoot earlier this year. One softbox overhead with one stop scrim between the light and the model. A scrim, for those who don't know, is a is a uh, something that blocks light so that you can better control it. Um, uh, the lens was a 105 at ISO 50 f8. Uh, let's bring this up. F8 at 200th of a second. All right, let's bring her up. I just want to know his, I want to know the creative process that said, we're going to paint your lips and the tops of your shoulders orange, and then you're going to, you're going to pose like this. I just, uh, you know, I, I'm so, I'm so saturated with brides and beauty posing and, and, you know, all that kind of stuff that I just, I, I love these images and I just love the, you know, the tension and the, and the shape and everything. Yeah. Um, I just, I'm just curious about the creative process that goes into these things i wonder um, I, I wonder if his is if his creative process is you know i i would envisage like tim sitting down with his makeup artist and giving the makeup artist some loose direction without being too prescriptive and saying okay yeah mm -hmm. kind of something like this and this and this is the colors that i want go for it you know or does he just say hey makeup artists let's play here's a pretty girl do something, yeah. you know, and yeah. then get surprised when she comes out of the makeup room. What do, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know. Either way, it works. I, I, I can tell that there's some intentionality in here, though, because the, the play on colors, you know, the orange and sort of what would that be like a sea green or whatever, a cyanish tone, mm -hmm. you know, they, they play off each other really well. So I'm sure that's not by accident. Um, my only suggestion to Tim on this is, and I feel odd giving Tim suggestions, is I wish some of the, the flyaway hair was tuned up a little bit. Not mm -hmm. all of it. Yeah. But certainly some of it and then i wish the orange had gone all the way on the back of her left shoulder um could probably photoshop that and, and fake that in there because it because you can see where the paint stopped and i wish that it went all the way around the back of her left shoulder oh right yeah yeah just wrap all the way around yeah 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 um yeah i'm, I'm on the fence about that i mean the the paint going down yeah i'd, I'd 100 agree with that and maybe a little bit of the flyaway hairs, but that kind of leads you to like, you know, I don't know. Her hair is kind of frizzy like that. <laughs> so. Just some on the back because they they already look like they're detached anyway, right? I mean, it's just the way that, that blonde hair works, so it's catching the light. So just a just a little bit. I mean, you know, I've got to find something. <laughs> yeah, you got to find something to critique Tim about. But yeah, yeah, great shot. Tim does Tim does fantastic work. I keep telling him he should do workshops and teach people how to do this MacGyver style photography. Um, that would be awesome. But you're hopefully, hopefully not to put you on the spot. You're talking to him about maybe teaching at F64. I'm just saying, just say it, you know. Yeah, that yeah, way. it's going to come up. It's it, going to come up. So just put that in your calendar, Tim. But this is an official invite for February 16th. <laughs> there you go. Done. Done. All right. Moving right along. The next shot here is from Nick Seth Smith. So I thought I would share something a little different. I've been working on these guys for a bit now and getting to understand their ethos a little. This is my latest go around with a group shot. Let's bring these guys up. Yeah, these guys are really cool. Yeah. That's this is ridiculous. 
These are like some of the wasteland models, like we, what we had at uh-huh. before last time. Yeah, yeah. But I, I have a feeling this is, they're not in costume. <laughs> or no. are they? Yeah, is this yeah, just their daily, yeah. is their daily uh, kind of look right here? Look That's at that. Cool. That is cool. And the processing on this just looks like, um, you remember those, um, you remember those old school photo booths they used to have where, and they probably have these probably at carnivals and stuff where you could get a picture of yourself and some, you know, they have a little, yeah. little pile of old clothes and you could dress up like an old Western person. And, you know, then they would take the photo and do sepia tone and distress it and then give it to yeah. you. This kind of yeah. looks like that. Right. But real. <laughs> real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, I love the shot. My only my only two suggestions are to crop the right side so that the heads balance better in the frame. I realize on the right you're cropping off. It looks like a bike or something, but mm-hmm. it it's kind of a negative space. And then the the noise layer because of the white speckles. I don't think it I don't think it helps. I think it's too heavy. Maybe you think, maybe, the, you think the distress is too much. Well, there looks, looks to me like there's a couple types of distress. Um, there's some vertical striations that are going on there, but there's these white snowflake things like in the upper right-hand corner. Mm-hmm. They're just way too heavy for me. I just think they just they look too organized and too intentional, and they don't look like it's actually random noise or, you know, like the image was scuffed or something. Yeah, yeah. So you would have would you have taken out that – the what would you have taken out? I would have I would have pulled down that layer because I know that that's a noise layer that he added, mm-hmm. and I would have just pulled that way 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 back. Maybe find some other type of noise or scratch or uh, like a like a coffee ring or something to put on that corner. You know something or maybe like some some sort of fake signature, like the artist signed it. You know back in the day when they used to do the the old plates or something. Um, yeah. Okay. Very cool. All right, good uh, good comments, and thank you, Nick, for submitting this. And I, I dig your signature, Nick, too. I like that. It's really cool. Your uh, your watermark. Still on the fence on it if I'm going to do a watermark or not. But. <laughs> All right, so moving down. Where is Nick's? Okay, the next one is from Gigi Imbrix. Um She says... I normally normally do not shoot black and white, but here's an older image I took in Wyoming. This gentleman had a great, such a great look, uh, had such a great cowboy look, and is the real deal. Canon 5D Mark III. She sw- since switched to Fujifilm. Um, this is shot at 173 millimeter f7.1 at one two hundredth of a second. Let's bring this up full screen. Take a look at it. Yeah, immediately I thought <clears throat> this one needs a little bit of a sepia tone. I think that would I think that would carry this one a long way. What about the what about the uh the noise layer from the other image from Nick's image? Nah. Nah, too much? Nah, too much. Maybe, maybe some kind of noise layer, you know, like a uh, just like a scratched you know, image kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But um, the first thing that I noticed in this image, and I love the image. I love the character. I love the fact his eyes are looking right into the camera, mm-hmm. but his eyes are out of focus. His eyes are a little soft. Yep. That was yeah. the first thing I noticed. Too. <clears throat> yep. That, there's there's two things. I love this shot too. This is this could be a Marlboro ad, right? And I even think that is a Marlboro. It is a Marlboro, yeah. Yeah, this could be a Marlboro ad. Um, I think which is requisite for cowboys out in Wyoming. I don't think you're allowed to smoke anything other than Marlboro. Like, You'd get, you'd be, uh, you'd be on trial if you got caught <laughs> smoking Newport or something. Um, but yeah, eyes out of focus, and his head gets lost in that hat for me. You know, at the it time. does, yeah, yeah. You know, and if there was more definition or some somehow a better way to separate or show more of the hat, so I know that he's wearing a black hat. I know, obviously, my brain says he's wearing a black hat, but it's having to work too hard to get to that conclusion. Do you agree? Yeah, with I think that? it's been burnt down too much. Yeah, yeah. But you you agree that the yes, uh, yeah, <clears throat> okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the hat is too dark. Yep. Very cool, Gigi. Very cool. Thank you for submitting this. And also, hey, Gigi, uh, if you're listening to this, which I I'm pretty sure you are, um, in Twit Pro, go ahead and uh, post something on your community. I know you have a Mighty Networks community as well. I'd be, uh, you know, I'd be. Uh, honored if you'd tell the twip pro members about what you're doing over there because you're doing some pretty cool stuff very cool yeah 
All right, here we go. And next one is from Mike Doran. He says uh, this image was created during the final round of the 2018 IndyCar Series at Sonoma Raceway. That's up here in California, Northern California. Um, as, and you can tell it's Northern California by <laughs> <laughs> the models, by six elements in the shot. But <laughs> But uh, yeah, this is a great. What, what do you think of this shot? I mean, from uh, there, there's a couple. I'll give you my comments first. So the first, first thing I think about, obviously, is look at these beautiful women in the shot. Jeez, right? right so right. that's obviously the first thing, and that's that's what he wants you to see. Um, the second thing is, from a technical standpoint, they're off center. So I see too much space on the left that with that iron sort of fencing there, right there. It seems like you could have cropped that off a little bit to make make it more centered in the frame. Um, and I think what is the other thing that I had in my notes? Yeah, so the center and the crop, um, and not that you can control this, but you know we say in the when we're doing these critiques all the time that your eye goes to the brightest thing or most contrasty thing in the shot normally, right? So the that tint behind them, the red tint that the sun is sort of glaring off the right side of it, yeah, it is distracting to me. It distracts me away from what should be these models. So maybe I would have cropped in just a little bit more to make this more of a traditional traditional portrait kind of group shot, you know, rather than leaving that space mm -hmm. around the top and, and the left. What say you, Troy Miller? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. The biggest thing for me was one, they look like that they've been hit with some kind of uh, skin softening filter, mm -hmm. which mm, maybe that's okay, but it looks a little unnatural to me. Mm -hmm. um, but more than anything else, it's the, it's the off center group. I mean, it's, there's really no reason for that either, either getting it in camera if you can't, but crop it later to put them nice and center heads higher to the top, get rid of that side on the left mm -hmm. and that that'll help a lot. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. Like it. Yep. Awesome. All right. Moving right along. Thank you, um, Mike Doran, for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Moving down to the next image. It looks like that's going to be Stephen Scharf. He said, St. Therese de Avila Church in Bodega, California. Legend has it the church was built by New England shipbuilding carpenters in 1860. Let's bring this guy up. Yeah, this wow, is, look uh, at that. Uh, see, that, that that's when, you know, there's always that never center anything in the frame and always use the rule of thirds and all that stuff. <laughs> and then here goes Stephen with a perfectly symmetrical image. It's balanced nearly to perfection. Yeah, but he's filling the frame. So that, yep. that does kind of, yeah. Yep. Yep. What do you, what do you no, think this about is this? This is fantastic. I mean, we've got we've got the horizontal lines are horizontal, the vertical lines are vertical. We've got continuous tone in that sky. The black and white treatment's really done nicely. Uh, there's detail in the highlights. Those are all the technical aspects of it. Those are the things my brain goes to right away. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, you know, do we have highlights and detail and shadow and everything? And then on top of that, just symmetrically, it's what a cool church. Yeah. You know, so yeah. what a what a fant yeah, it's a great capture. It's really good. Yeah. No, I, I dig it as well. Well, the, the, the only thing that my brain and this is like, you know, sorting grains of sand. Right. So uh, fantastic image. The only thing is it's the church is slightly off center because he's going for symmetry in this shot. And it's slightly closer to the right side of the frame than it is to the left side of the. Frame. Yeah. <laughs> it right? is, yeah. So he's like, yeah. I don't know if he did that on purpose for to screw with my OCD, but it's <laughs> my OCD wants to either crop off a sliver from the left side of the frame or move the church or something. But you know, that's that's like I said, we're shifting around grains of sand at that point. Yeah, and you know what? I'm I'm wondering. Yeah, it is a little bit. Yep. It yeah. definitely is. I was going to see if it was an optical illusion. Yeah, it's, you it's thought off. it was an optical illusion? <laughs> yeah, I did. No, it's definitely off. <laughs> yeah, it's off a little bit. So, Steven, you're killing me. But yeah. great shot. Great shot. All right. Moving right along. We're moving at a good clip. We're getting good at this. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Craig Stampfley down under. Uh, this is Annie Pets. Let's bring this one up. 
All right, this is a portrait. I'm gonna let you have at it since you're the portraitist of the <laughs> group here. <laughs> you know, it's it, uh, you know, I really I like the black and white. I like the you know the way that this is lit, the treatment and everything. The the thing where I'm really struggling with this, and I saw it immediately in the thumbnail, is I don't feel like she is intentionally positioned and posed and doing something. Mm -hmm. I feel like she's sitting there waiting to have her portrait taken. Mm -hmm. um, the necklace is crooked. The, you know, um, the lighting on her face is flat, which I'm okay with. Her shoulders are slumped a little bit. It's, mm -hmm. it's that she's just kind of sitting relaxed. And for portraits like this, you know, you need to have them sit up and lean forward and, you know, posing helpers and little, little things like that, I think would help. And then plus, she needs to lift her chin into the camera so you don't see white underneath the iris because then it kind of feels a little um, disinterested, maybe. I don't know what the word is. It, it, it would feel better if she was lifting her chin up just a tad and so those irises or eyes were centered yeah see I, I wonder about that i'm glad you brought that up because one of the things that bugs me in a lot of portraits especially of women i don't know why it's when, when they're shot from too low and or they're lifting their head up too much and you can see into their nostrils Right. For, some, right. for some reason, I, I mean, for obvious reasons, <laughs> I don't, but I don't like to look into people's nostrils. So, you know, I tend to shoot down, uh, uh, you know, for the most part of portraits. What's what's your rule of thumb on that? Is there or is there any? Um, well, slightly higher is thinning. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's 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 complementary and it's thinning as opposed to shooting lower. So I always try to shoot slightly above eye level. Now, this is even higher than that, but you need them to lift their chin to you. It stretches out the neck. She doesn't have this condition. Um, you're not going to be looking into the nostrils, but what it does, it opens up the eyes. And whenever you have a part, the iris of the eye buried behind the nose or under an eyelid or something, it, it doesn't seem as awake. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, so for me, this this portrait, although the lighting and the and the toning and stuff is really wonderful, I don't feel like it needs more intentionality in the posing and, and the movement of the body. And that takes a long time if you're not if you're not used to doing it. It just takes a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I hear you. Um, the other thing, like technically, you know, from a lighting standpoint, she, their skin tone on her forehead, cheeks, chin, etc., and even down on her chest a little bit and neck, um, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of detail in there. I don't know if that was intentional or or not. And then the nitpicking OCD thing that's bothering me is Craig put a watermark on here, which he normally does, but it's getting lost in all the white. So I would have either made it a gray <laughs> or black and put it on there so that it pops out a little more. If you're going to have it on there, you know, just say it, you know, I don't know. But that's nitpicking, obviously. But that's why we're here to nitpick. We should nitpicker. rename these the nitpick, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's time for another episode of the nitpick. All right. Thank you, Craig Stanfley, for that. Moving right along. All right. Next one is another one from Craig Stanfley. He says, one more from my little project and my best impression of Peter Levshin messing with other people's <laughs> minds. <laughs> uh, shooting into a curved and dirty dented mirror using car parks. Yeah, or used in car parks. All right. Let's yeah, that up. yeah. It's See, always now, good to mess with Peter Levshin's mind, right? Come yeah. on. <laughs> if he wanted to mess with Peter, he wouldn't have put in what it was. Until yeah. Uh, there you go. People asked, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, we should start a whole category, you know, messing yeah. with Peter Levin. <laughs> yeah. I love this shot. I, I love these kind of shots. These I mean, abstract just, shots, yeah. I, I dig it. I, I really do. I mean, I would go I would go so far as to, though, cloning out the tripod head, leave the camera body there, but clone out the tripod head because it wouldn't be hard to do. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the stand, and that would be even more weird because you'd be like, okay, I, I don't get it. If it's a mirror, how come I can't see anything and just mess with everybody even right. more? Right. Yeah. This is this could be modern art, and this would probably go for like twenty thousand dollars in yeah. in LACMA, the the Los Angeles uh, Modern Art Museum. Right? Yeah. <laughs> or you go in there and there's a you know a shot like this, or not even as cool as this, that's uh, you know getting thirty grand. 
No, but good job handling all the highlights and the shadows, and and that's so important in in you know sort of the intentional quality of a photo is, mm-hmm. is keeping that tonal range in there. <clears throat> what category would you put this in? Like, would this be street photography? Would this be photojournalism? Would this be like if you, if this was submitted to a contest and you know one of the IEPPV contests that you that you judge or mm-hmm. where would it go? Illustrative. Oh, okay. Yeah, illustrative is sort of a catch-all for anything that doesn't fit somewhere else. You could call it photojournalism, but then again, it's not traditional photojournalism, right? Like we don't really we don't get the story. There's you know this wouldn't be in uh, in, in the paper or with a headline. You like you wouldn't get it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it's more abstract art, which is illustrative. Okay, got it. Very cool. Or illustrative, depending on. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to seem to. I know. I know. Bougie. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Sliding that down, uh, let's move over. Here's another one from Craig Stampley. This is a VW Combi van, Combi, Combi, uh, right-hand drive because that's how we roll down here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you guys, there you go. Cool, look at that. God, I love the architecture, not the architecture, but the industrial design of uh, of that era, right? Yeah. Like, and the, yeah. even the color palettes are like this, all right? This teal and white and pink and reddish and white and blacks and all that stuff this is beautiful yeah i i love it i i don't really have a lot to add except i wish that the whole uh steering wheel was in there i think that would really help tell the story a little bit better Mm -hmm. but you know he's handled the horizontal lines across the top of the window exceptionally well the exposure is handled exceptionally well Mm -hmm. so it tells a fantastic story so really that's just nitpicking which is what we do um I love the color. I mean, you know, this is great. This is fantastic. And and I'll, I'll admit, this is one of those images that you can't do in color as well because you need to see that amazing teal, you know, in the car. You need to see that, and it works really well. You so, mean that you so, can't do in black and white? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what did I say? Yeah, yeah, it needs to be color, not black and white. Right, yeah, I'm, right, I, yeah. No, no, I agree. Yeah, I mean, color is part of the story that he's telling here. So. Yes, yes. All right. Very cool. I want to see the whole van, though. I want to see what that combi van looks like. Now you forced me to Google it. See, people are messing with my OCD today. Come on. All right. Mark Harris says, a little experimentation with Flora Fauna, Nikon D850, Zeiss 21mm F2.8 at, at F6.3, ISO 6400 at 1 one hundredth of a second with the Westcott Ice Light with barn doors. I need those barn doors. All right. Let's pull this guy up. Or this lady up. Very nice. Okay. There you go. What do you think? This, is enough. this one is kind of in the illustrative portraiture artistic yeah, this category, would, right? This would work really well in portrait. Um, I, I, love every, I love everything about it. I, I have two challenges for this. I mean, two things that I struggle with. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is her hands. That is one. Um, I think that they, should, they, they could be more intentionally laid there. And then that piece of fabric. I just wish that piece of fabric wasn't there. Yeah. Um, you could almost just get rid of the fabric and just clone it out to black, leave the hands alone. Mm-hmm. And I think you would have a portfolio piece with that. Um, but the hands I wish were – and I don't know what you would do different with them. I think maybe if they were connected a little bit, if they were – she was leaning on them less and they were more draped there. But basically the fabric. The fabric is the thing that's really killing me. But love the light on her face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's very contrary. Those ice lights are, are really cool to play around with. I, I agree with you. The 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 nitpick of this image for me is is that fabric, right? Because I don't know why it's there. It, what part of the story of her is it telling, right? Or right. Is, it, is it just superfluous, you know? And if so, nix it, get rid of it, um, or not have it there to begin with. But if there's a reason for it, Craig, let us know. All right. Moving on, next shot is from Mark Harris. He says he's been working on a long-term series of models wearing black against a black background. This one with Rebecca Lawrence um, is in her own knit lace dress. It is the most recent edition. It's a D850 Zeiss 50 mil 14 at F71 ISO 250 one twenty-fifth of a second. And the lighting is a single strobe and a long strip box with a grid. Let's take this out. Bring it big. 
Look at that. See, I love these kind of shots. This is like, this is timeless to me, right? This, you could look at this shot in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and it still works, right? Yeah. It still works. Uh, I love it. I like, and I like portraiture, and I like black and white, and I like dark backgrounds. So <laughs> it's, it's tickling a number of switches in my head. <laughs> yeah. What, what yeah. do you think? No, this is this is exquisite. I mean, this is super, super nice. I mean, I really love the fact that there's a shadow even on the black background. There's some little bit of separation over there. Um, I wish I could see her feet. So I wish I wish we could see that. Maybe that's just in, you know, the compression in the in the streaming. Um we're on the web and then the only gripe that i have and and i'm i'm gonna pick up mark a little bit with this is that you know when you do these elegant poses and you spend all this time you got to watch the other hand right like that left hand mm -hmm. it's a claw mm. and oh it's pulling right. well she's pulling up her dress right to show more of her leg I why mean, not right or, or she, she, she'd be pulling it up daintily with a pinky sticking yeah. out like what do you think no, not with a pinky sticking out, but right now it just looks like a claw. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that if you're gonna if you're gonna pull it up and you're gonna do it in a sexy way, which this pose is very, um, it would be it would be less um, uh, masculine with that hand, mm. right? Yeah. yeah. And and even if you even if you leave the hand the way it is, that's totally fine. Is just burn it down because mm. it it make needs it, to be yeah make it less obvious yeah yeah yeah. Very good. But, you know, it's it's hard, though, because you get 99 percent of the pose and I know you spent a lot of time on it. And then somebody like me comes and goes, yeah, well, you got to fix that hand. Bastard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's happened to me so many times. I, I lost the uh, I lost a uh, an award in a portrait competition because of a hand. Oh, really? Interesting. Yep. You know, and it's interesting for these kind of shots. It's funny you draw a circle around that, but it's. It's it's kind of like you're when you do something and you get too close to something, you start not seeing things like when I'm writing, if I'm writing something and you have you ever done the the, the thing, you know, where you put oh, two, yeah. you put two yeah. those in there and you for the life of you didn't know you put the, you could read it 15 times and you never see those double those until somebody else reads it and then they fix it, you know, or you you come back a day later with the with a different brain and look at it and you see it. Same thing with photography, like the claw, you know, you probably even notice it because you're like focused on right. her other hand and her eye and where she's looking. And, you know, she's concerned with the dress looking right and all this stuff. And you see the shot and you click it. Got it. Boom. Gone. Right. Yep. So. Yep. All right. Let's move right on here. Bum, bum, bum. All right. We have a couple more to go through. Um, let's see. The next one is from uh, Thomas Aaron. There it is. Okay, Thomas Aaron. I realize the monochromatic critique is next week, but I've been putting a good deal of work into a few, so I'll throw some into the pile. Yeah, we'll we'll call that monochromatic critique. This is Redger or Ruger, by the way. He's an old soul. He tried to capture that. Um, yeah, the, we're, we're going to call that monochromatic critique. The placating Troy Miller show. <laughs> <laughs> I did say monochromatic or duotone. Like yeah. you can, you could do. Yeah, yeah. The next one will be infrared, right? <laughs> so, Ooh, yeah. it should be. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. What do you What do you think of Ruger here? I love Ruger. Uh, Ruger's a boxer. I'm assuming. I'm guessing. So yeah. you know, he's very, very fun. They're fun to play with. Um, I think that the overall image is too bright. Uh, we need to bring bring it way 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 down his like chest. Ruger's chest, yeah. Yeah, and and I'm 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 betting he's lit by the sun or something, and he's got black fur, so I think it's probably just overexposed. We could just bring that down a lot, but I I love the shot. I mean, it's a it's a it's a great portrait of a of a crazy dog. Those guys are crazy. Yeah, yeah, boxers. I've never never really never owned a boxer. They they always look so uh, mad. <laughs> They're a little crazy. <laughs> At least the ones I've met. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Awesome. All right. Moving right along. Thank you, Thomas Aaron, for that. You rock, sir. All right. Another another pup from Thomas Aaron. This is a stray street dog in Caltabellota, Sicily. Caltabellota, Sicily. Sicily. All right. 
Yeah, that dog has. What you looking at, man? <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that. I mean, that's my my first thought is I I don't even know. I'm trying to think like how to critique this and say what would you do better. I mean, I I might love to see the extent the, the all the paws mm-hmm. right or mm-hmm. the whole body or whatever. But but really, it's all about his face. Yes, you know, a hundred percent. Yeah, 100%. yeah. That's a photojournalism shot right there. Yep, that's a that dog looks like a, I'm minding my own business. Did I give you permission to take my photo? No. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is a this is a street. They, well, street photography or photojournalism, right? Which which are basically interchangeable, I guess, right? Right, right. All right, very cool. Street photographer, stray street dog in Caltabellota, Sicily. Thomas Aaron. The shameless generalist. All right, moving on. Just got a couple more to go through here. This is fun. I like going through these fast. I think fast is 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 good. Yeah. Uh, this is Mike Brookbank. He said, "Just joined the group today. Welcome, Mr. Brookbank, to the fray." Uh, he said, he "Just joined the group today. Excited about these weekly critiques. Keep up the good work. Cheers." This is a Fuji XT3 with a 23 millimeter f2 ISO 100. ISO 100 at one one thousandths. I always have trouble with that word. Of a second at f8, thousandths of a second. All right, here we go. This is our first critique for our new member. Would say you. I say very cool concept. I'm assuming he put the you know the shadow split in there on purpose. You know, so the highlight in the shadow is always going to be a challenge when we have those in the same image. So, I would say push the HDR concept here a little bit more to try to get some more detail back in that highlight side mm-hmm. and then open up the shadows a little bit. Cause I, I still like the, 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 you know, the dichotomy of those two, right. Mm-hmm. Sort of the, the tension. And I think we could crop everything off on the top, maybe leave that little opening and a little tiny bit of the underside of the bridge. Just to show that you're, in, you're underneath something. Yeah. But not mm. that much. There's, there's really nothing going on up there. Mm. And, um, yeah. if we crop it, 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 it pushes the, it pushes the eyes down. I agree. I agree. Yeah. You could lose some at the top of that, but he's, uh, you know, if he was going square for a reason, then, you know, then that, that changes the equation. But if, if the crop doesn't matter, I would agree. Yeah. Bring that, right. bring that top, lose some of that down, bring some detail into the lower right hand corner. Cause it's, it's a little bit hot. Um, and maybe a little bit more detail and contrast into that mid tone area on the left as well. Yep. But, yep. Uh, and if I was, if this was my image, I would, I would also correct the, uh, the, um, non horizontal lines, you know, the converging lines to the right, they're converging to the right because you shot a little bit on an angle from the left. Mm -hmm. So in Lightroom, you could just transform that, draw those two lines and make them parallel and pull that bottom down, that bottom right hand corner. Right. Yeah. And I mean, you wouldn't really notice it. Right. But it would seem like it was totally flat, like you shot it straight on. And I think that that would help a little bit because you don't need that. Uh, that water in the bottom necessarily. Yeah. I don't know. Play with that. But I mean, I, I like it the way it is. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, very very good first submission to the Twip Pro Photo Critique. And it's in the proper tonal range. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's black and white. Love it. Proper. Listen to that guy. Proper. All right. Uh, Andy S. Once in a while, I just drive down a random road to see what I can find. Hey, I do that too, Andy, <laughs> all the time. Thank you, GPS. Uh, found this in the canyons. It's a T6i with a Tamron um 16 to 300 millimeter lens at one two thousandths of a second f11 at iso 6400 all right bring it up here all right there's a there's a pug in there is that a pit bull no that's a pug right yeah it's a pug statue yeah, yeah a little pug little pug statue i know what you're thinking can i say what yep. Yeah, you're, you're thinking this is a perfect background for a portrait. <laughs> <laughs> that would be right. <laughs> this needs a long. This needs a bride in there with a long flowing wedding dress spread out in the front of this this little stand and all that, right? Oh, just somebody sitting, yeah, sitting there reading a book or you know a couple mm-hmm. or like an engagement session or romantic session sitting on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 No, 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 I dig this. This looks creepy too. It looks a, it's a little scary with these it looks a little little red riding hood ish, right? <laughs> <laughs> so all right. So no further thoughts on this one? No, I, I it's great. I love it just the way it is. 
Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you, Andy, for submitting that one. All right. We got just a couple more. This is from Stephen Sharp. The City Pulsar on his Fujifilm X-T2, 18 to 55 millimeter F2.8 uh, to Ford, 25 seconds at F13. Look at that. That is really cool. I'm just, I'm just sort of like taking it all in right now. It yeah. looks, it looks really nice. There's some. It feels like it's a little bit. I don't know if there's atmospherics in there, but it feels a little soft to me. It does feel a little soft, um, and I can't, I can't quite tell because I don't have the resolution to look at it. But it looks to me like there was some Photoshoppy work done in the sky. Mm-hmm. Um, over the city, like something was cloned out, and I can see like some clone tracks in there. Easily, easily fixed, however. But uh, I really love this. I, I love this with the, what is that? Probably the moon. I'm guessing the moon in there. I'm guessing that's the moon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is kind of weird. It makes me feel like is that that? It looks sunnish, but it is it is the moon. But yeah, I see those I see those Photoshop tracks kind of right in this area right here. I'm drawing a little circle around it. Yeah, like there was something in there that got moved or moved during the exposure or something. But yeah. Yeah, actually along that sort of line in the middle, you can see some tracks in there. So Stephen, yeah, you might want to zoom in on that and uh and do some surgery. But yeah, cool shot. Cool shot. All right, we're going to move on to the next one. Thank you, Stephen Scharf. All right, Kyle Nishioka. This is one is one of the few times I did shoot a little bit of rain, shoot with a little bit of rain uh, in from the passing showers. Uh, let's just bring this up here. The drizzle was so light that we didn't have to take cover. Luckily, the sun was still shining and it backlit the model's hair. Look at that. Yeah, this is great. I mean, you know, this is this is stuff you try to set up, mm-hmm. right? Like yeah. a little bit of rain. I'm gonna have a strobe back there, and um, yeah, I I love it. I love it. As far as a pose goes, I just wish her left elbow was bent a little bit, hmm. um, but not too much. I mean, you know, her left hand lay a little tightly on her on her hip or her waist. I was there, gonna say but, that. Yeah, maybe lay lay it on her because she's got a she look, from this angles and maybe it's the dress that she has on, but it looks like she has an impossibly thin waist. Right, right. So, right. you know, if you bring her hand up and sort of rest it on her hip, it would accentuate that as well. But yeah, great, great shot. And I was thinking when I first saw this that those that the rain was put in in post, but that was actually there. So Kyle Nishioka gets even more credit. The other yeah. thing, the other thing that you know that's tickling my nitpicking OCD is that that uh, manhole cover on the left of the frame there. Yeah, the on the grass. Yeah, yeah that could uh, you get to clone that out, you know, relatively easily just to make it less distracting down there. And there, I think yeah. there, it looks like there's something um, down at the bottom of the frame on the right too, next to her dress. See it down there at the corner. Yeah. Yeah, that you probably clone that out as well. But yeah, easily but, clone that out. Yep. Other than that, cool. Cool stuff. Yeah, well handled. Yeah, Kyle Nishioka. All right. Last but not least, City Moon, Full Moon over San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge, Marin Headlands, um, the Fujifilm X-T2 and 18 to 55 millimeter F18. Uh, I was going to say 1.8. F18 at 25 seconds. ISO 400. This is from um, Stephen Scharf. And he says, uh, note, putting this in as a last second entry uh, if it's too late for the September 20th. Nope, you're in here, dude. You made it. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, <clears throat> this is this is really really nice. I think this is this is definitely one of Stephen's best images that I've seen him uh, submit to the critique. I mean the the balance, the reflection, the color in the middle. I I do struggle, and it's just a normal struggle. Is that the horizon seems too centered for me? Mm-hmm. So maybe crop a little bit off the bottom. I would play with that. But even if you didn't do that. I I wouldn't I wouldn't complain much. I think if if we took it to the first little bay or whatever you want to call it, you know, leave that little outcrop and then crop it so it's just water and then that little first peninsula mm-hmm. might be a little stronger image. Yeah. Um but you know, exceptionally well done. I love that the moon is centered horizontally but vertically it's up really high. So mm-hmm. 
What about what about color? Do you think? Uh, I mean, Golden Gate Bridge is iconic and it's got its mm-hmm. iconic color, so that is a reason to keep color in here. But would you would you li- want to see this in black and white? I would. Yeah, I would definitely do that because when you go to black and white, then it becomes more of a mystery, Mm -hmm. right? And then it's going to be more about the moon and the reflection and the water and the shape of the land. And then, oh, look, there's a bridge in the back. And then also I think that it would feel very classic. You know, there's a lot of black and white images of of this bridge and stuff. So, um, but the way, I mean, either one, I, I I would definitely make two versions. Yeah. And the last question I have for you on this image is the framing. And, and putting the white frame around it, do you think that adds to it, takes away from it, or is it, you know, artist's Frames choice? are tough. It's, it's tough. I mean, in, in this condition, I, I think it's a nice presentation. I think it adds to it. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, it's harmful in any way. Um, no, I, I like it. I like it. Yeah. It feels very classic. Yeah. I mean, like classic gallery type prints are always done like on a white mat. Yep, for sure. So it feels very traditional to me. Well, cool. All right. We made it through. What, Bam. What great images. Congratulations, everybody, for uh, for submitting such fantastic images into the Twit Pro um, topic. Troy Miller, uh, any any final thoughts before we before we part ways? No. Get those, you know, get get those images in for next week. I want to see all that cool monochromatic duo tone. Yes. I'm so excited. <laughs> And remember, you have to enter one. I do. I do. I'm, I'm in. I'm going to enter. I may enter two into that one. So I will be entering into the monochromatic. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do. It may be a portrait. I, don't know. I may do a portrait just to uh, shake it up. And so that you can critique the heck out of me because, you know, <laughs> that's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Troy Miller, I'm going to let you go. I know you got things to do, places to go, people to see. What, uh, where should people go to connect with you online if they want to do so? Uh, you can track me down at spicyjello.com or spicyjello on Instagram. I'm also on the Twit Pro community, so you can always reach out to me there. So I'm always willing to have a conversation. Awesome. All right, Troy Miller nitpicker extraordinaire thank you (laughs) (laughs) you should get a t-shirt that says i nitpick (laughs) i think enough people know that already yeah there you go who knows me yeah yeah well it's good what's the alternative i'd rather be nitpicky than not so right right cool man all right well thank you so much for uh for the time today we'll see you next time of course all right thanks bud take care peace This is Twitter.